Hello, Internet. How are you doing? I'm really sorry to hear that, actually. Um, would you care to join me for a drink? So, sorry. Um, uh, so, Clarendon Distillery, also known as Moni Musk. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of these. I've, I think I've had um, maybe one, but and, and a bunch of things that have Clarendon included in the blend somewhere. But in general, despite my love of Jamaican rum and exploration of the category, I really haven't dove into it that much. So I figured now was the time, having uh, been a bit disappointed by some worthy parks I reviewed recently. Let's, uh, let's go try, try uh, this on for size. Moni Musk, one of the two distilleries along with, with uh, Long Pond um, that are owned by the... National Rums of Jamaica, which is this really big, interesting consortium. They have a column still. They still have a column still. L Long Pond used to, and uh, I don't think it's still in operation anymore. Um, and that means they are one of the few distilleries on the island that can actually compete with uh, Appleton, um, making, you know, basically blended rum column and and pot still rum uh on the island which is kind of cool um i've been trying to find their their overproof um which i'm pr i'm pretty sure i won't enjoy all that much but i'm trying to find it anyways um and in the meantime we're going to try these two which one of which is not technically 100 uh uh clarendon but but still we're gonna we're gonna try it for fun all right so and they're both Basically, fire bombs. All right. First of all, we have a bottle from Ed Hamilton, the uh, Ministry of Rum guy. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of glare there. Come on, focus, focus. Okay. What this is is a Clarendon Estate Jamaican rum. Again, Hamilton single cask strength collection, and this was a pick by the Florida Rum Society. Uh, that they also did the, uh, the one of the Worthy Park picks that I was talking about. This is a ten year old. It was. Um, distilled or, or rather barreled in um what is that uh a may of 2011 and then finally bottled in um september of, of 2021 so eight years of tropical aging plus uh, about two years in, on the continent uh this was barrel number four three five seven six eight it was all pot distilled and that's important when you're buying clarinet you have to make it to some extent long pond too you have to make sure you are getting the pot distillate and not pot column distilled rum because I mean buying you know column distilled rum from Jamaica is it's like going to the best curry shop in your town and ordering like chicken fingers it's really why why are you skipping the best thing on the menu anyhow the interesting thing about this which I don't know it's a question mark and I just want to make that clear is the mark uh, obviously I don't have the full bottle here this is a little sample bottle uh, but the mark is listed as WNJME um, which if you look up the list of uh, the uh, Clarendon recipes the money mark recipes they use for making their the rums and the, the associated ester levels you will not see uh, WNJME so uh, clearly this is something a little bit weird and special the the, the first two letters WN make me think maybe this is associated with Ray and Nephew. Maybe this is a particular mark that uh, is meant to go be used in um, Ray and Nephew rums. Uh, the fact that this is this is clearly went into a barrel is a little bit weird though because so maybe it was one of the uh, the Ray and Nephews that um, uh, one of the aged Ray and Nephews that tends to stay on the on the island. I don't know for sure. But so I, I'm only speculating. Anyways, that's that's what the mark. That's all the information I have, except that this is bottled at 68.1 percent alcohol, which is very exciting and fun. All right, uh, we'll get into the second one in a minute. But I'm going to give you some notes on this uh, this uh, Hamilton single cask. Here we go. Ooh. On the nose, it is just this ginormous explosion of like. Um, so on the one hand, like vanilla. Pound cake, mint tea, lots of like Senegalese West Coast African mint tea. And if you haven't had that, go go buy yourself a cup because you need that flavor profile in there. It's it's 
something I get all the time on kind of mid-mark uh, pot still rums, particularly from Jamaica, but throughout the rest of the Caribbean, really. Yeah, there's some bananas foster in here. A um, little touch of like a, a pineapple thing. It's more like pineapple, the in, inside of a pineapple shell after you've actually scooped all the fruit out than it is actually the fruit. Um, but then there's this this distinctive kind of Clarendon Moni Musk thing, which is it's it, there is a gunpowder note on this. Yeah, it's it's absolutely gunpowder. There's a little bit more. There's a little bit more of like a traditional rummy note. There's a little bit of a black olive fennel sea kind of thing, which is what I expect to see in in rums, along with a splash of seawater. I'm not really getting the seawater on this, but more. Uh, what what seems to be coming more from the distillate is that kind of gunpowder thing, and even like a rubber cement kind of quality, which is. So there's a rubbery industrial thing, which reminds me a little bit of uh, St. Lucia's Vendome still, or maybe even a little bit of Coroni, although it's uh, not anywhere near as extreme as that. And it works. This combination of kind of like fruity, vanilla stuff with that, you know, very industrial side, that it really works well. Uh, there's also some dessert cherry on this. Um, maybe like a twist of uh, okay, actually a, tw a twist of orange and also a twist of lime. Just like a a general woodiness. This has a lot of. This is a pretty fresh cask, I imagine. There's some flowers. There's some like melon notes. It's, it's really reminding me a little, a little bit of Viognier in certain respects. There's even like a kind of oiliness on the nose. Um, I'm enjoying this. This is, this is a very, very impressive nose. All right. On the palate, here we go. I'm a little scared because this is quite strong. Oh. Um, so on the back end, there is a... a the back end is, has a lot of a lot of kick to it. There's a lot of like very over stewed tea meets black pepper thing going on, and it's very nippy. The alcohol is very evident on this, um, but it's also extremely good. What's present here and was missing on the nose is a kind of leafy character. So I'm still getting that vanilla cake kind of mint tea thing again and also like that that kind of rubber cement gunpowder thing again but there's also like this kind of yeah, like wet leaves kind of thing running through the palate um almost like a soggy cigar kind of thing too like uh, uh almost if, if, as if you soaked your cigars in like some really potent high you know pot still rum for example um Plus, like the again, the one olive and the one fennel seed; those are back. Um, this is terrific. I'm, I'm, I really like this. It, the alcohol is, it's there. It's aggro, but I'm okay with that. Um, it just means like there's, when you when you drop your money on this, you're getting more flavor in the bottle. One more time. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's give this a little bit of water. Proof it down. And see what happens. See how it relax, reacts. I'm going to need at least five squirts for this. Probably six, maybe seven. Five. I think that was five. No, we need six. Oh. I really like the eyedropper because it's repeatable. You're not adding that much at one time. And if you're pouring pretty much the same amount uh, per glass, you start to get used to how much you should be you should be adding. So um, obviously I don't have a whole lot of this left, but now I will know I kind of need, well, really I'm going to give this another half. So we're going to say six and a half squirts to get this kind of in comfortable drinking shape. Okay. 
I mean, one thing I would say about this is if, is I would not, this is a little hot to, to take neat. So um, maybe not your first choice if, if you do not want to add water to your, to your, um, to your spirits. Okay, moving on to the second bottle, this I have in full. This is the Scotland Rum Lab Edition. Now, okay, uh, Scotland Rum is not a, uh, a rum from Scotland. It is, it is a Danish rum by a guy named Scotlander. Um, and they have the, their own se separate line. The Lab Edition is a little bit special because um, this is their sourcing from Jamaica and it's, it's a high ester white rum from Jamaica. So this is uh, pot distilled from molasses uh, at Moni Musk, which is Clarendon again. And there's some from New Yarmouth too. Uh, this was distilled in, in 2000, but then only bottled in, in, I'm sorry, 2017, but then only bottled in 2020. So presumably in steel or concrete or something for about three years. Um, the esters on this are, are quite high, uh, as, as the name would indicate. 720 grams uh, per hectoliter of pure alcohol. That is pretty serious. It's batch number SJK01, if you're curious. Um, now, uh, the thing is, if you go back and look at that, that recipe list at, uh, at uh, uh, Moni Musk again, you will notice that uh, none of the recipes go up as high as uh, 720 uh, grams. Mm -hmm. So um, it has to be the New Yarmouth that's making up that difference, right? Um, uh, what else can I say? Oh, yeah. And bottled at 75.2% alcohol. So this is absolutely hazmat territory. All right, let's get into this. Here we go. Uh, so we are in the realm of uh, re really seriously high ester rum. Uh, not crazy, insanely high ester rum. Like this is, is about half of what uh, DOK or TECC from uh, from Long from uh, Hamden and Long Pond, distinct, uh, respectively, offer. But, but on on regular human standards, this is very high ester. So uh, let's let's get our nose into this. Here we go. Intriguing. It's actually um, it's actually quite restrained. You, you can tell there's a ton of stuff in this, but it's not really like falling out of the glass on me. If that makes sense, it's very it's a very gentle gianty. If that makes sense. It's like, it feels like cotton candy and like whipped cream are running f smack into a, like a wall of rocks. That's really my initial impression of this, of this nose. Um, there is a stewed yams note, um, which is actually one of my favorite things to get with Jamaican food here in Chicago. Um, Lots of dried flowers, but and the flowers are kind of mingling with the rocks in that way that high ester rum kind of, kind of tends to do. There's re, there's touches of brine and maybe some fennel in there, kind of mingling in, but it's really all about that the kind of candied notes, and the minerality and and um, and the floral, the floral thing. It's quite nippy. I should I should point that out. I'm get, I'm getting a lot of alcohol. Um, there's some rock candy. There's like a, um, like a carrot greens kind of note. Like you've got your, um, your sort of local farmer's gift box that you paid for and, and you decided, um, d God damn it, I'm going to use these carrot greens for something. And you cook them up on your, in your, with some butter on your stove. That's kind of what this smells like. And there's a like a fruity bubblegum thing, like like fruit bubblegum, like a, a a mixture of different fruit bubblegums is kind of what this is doing. That's there too. Okay, I'm a little scared to drink this. Actually, I'm more scared than the previous one. You will notice I put this second, even though this hasn't been aged. Um, so here we go on the nose. Mm. On the palate, I mean. Oh God. Well, as you expect, this is very, very big, very bruising. Um, yeah, rocks, flowers everywhere. There's a there's a blueberry pie kind of thing. Um, 
and a sweet potato pie kind of thing going on in this. Um, white pepper, some fennel. I mean, it's dense. It's like, it's really dense. But, I mean, at this moment, it's, again, it feels quite restrained. It's, it's, it's not, it feels like it's not showing as much complexity as, as I would expect from, you know, a rum like this. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot going on, but it's not, sh it's not showing as much as I, I feel like should be there, if that makes sense. Um, bubblegum notes, fruit bubblegum notes. Cotton candy again. A little gunpowder. So there's a little bit of, of that classic Clarendon note kind of kind of uh, showing through. Um, yeah, I like this, but it's I, I want more out of it, if that makes sense. So and let's see. Um, so one way to see if this will you know give me more is just to you know hit it with a lot of water and see what happens. So we're gonna add at least six squirts to this. Two, three, four, five, six, and I'm guessing we will need seven. Let's see. Cool. Yeah, I think we need seven. <coughs> All right, so at the moment, the uh, the aged example, the the Clarendon ten year old, is kind of winning this for me, Des despite the fact the the sheer power of the Scotlander here. Um, but what I'm what I'm kind of expecting to happen is this, for the Scotlander to come to kind of wake up and and open up with with water and kind of run forward and win this thing, because I really love high, you know, high ester rums. I I. I just do, and I expect them to show up really well. All right, but um, we shall see what happens. Back to the uh, the Hamilton. Here we go on the nose now with water. Oh, a little bit of a coffee note kind of coming through now, like um, um, oh, what is that? You, you know, like after you finish like a bag of coffee, and you still have those little the little husks and half seeds at the bottom of it that's kind of what it smells like that it smells like the last dregs of your bag of like artisanal coffee yeah this is this is pretty much on the nose pretty much perfect um this is the the, the, the vanilla slash mint tea mid ester style of rum thing is is it's just doing this really really well and but 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 it's not just that it's it's got those little Clarendon notes those little that little hint of rubber and gunpowder just to give it a little bit of character and 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 I, I appreciate that I really like that on the palate Ooh. once again very peppery very gunpowdery, very dry on the back end. But the fruit and those savory touches, the leafiness, are really winning me over on this. Um, and that just kind of classic vanilla mint tea, you know, kirsch kind of character. Um, This is righteous. This is really good. Um, it's, it's impeccable, I think is the word for this. Um, yeah, I'm going to give this... Uh, I can't give it a 90. Um, no, nah, I can't do it. Um, I'm going to give this 89 out of 100. Uh, 89 out of 100 for this Clarendon uh, Florida Rum Society Hamilton pick. And I think it's it's just under under hundred bucks on their website, and I think for that price, it's this is very reasonable. Um, I think this is a good deal. Actually, I'll grab this. I would certainly grab this over the Worthy Park they were selling. Um, good stuff. Back to the Scotlander. 
Here we go. Uh, Jamaican High Ester White Rum Blend of New Yarmouth and Moni Musk, now with a little bit of water in it. Actually, quite a lot of water in it. Okay. Um, less development than I was hoping for. It really kind of smells mostly the same. And that nose is like a, like, rock smoke and cotton candy. It's a hair a bit more peppery, maybe the the, or maybe the it's just the rocks being more smoky. Like when I say smoky, I don't mean like you're burning rocks. I mean more like, you know, do you remember the Willet Blend guy? Like like it's as if the Willet Blend guy was just blending up a whole bunch of rocks and then he popped it open, and all the rock smoke came out. That's what I'm thinking about when I when I say rock smoke. I mean, it's, it's a nice nose. In, it's a nice nose. But in my brain, like, I am I am thinking about Hamden D.O.K. I am thinking about, you know, Lawn Pond T.E.C.C. And it just isn't quite up there. It isn't quite bringing that much detail, um, frankly, on the palate. Okay, there is like a, a little like a rubber thing going on here, which I appreciate. I think that's, again, the, the Moni Musk, uh, the Clarendon speaking up. But yeah, this is mostly just kind of rocks and cotton candy and flowers and bubble gum now. And I like it. I do. I like this. I like this. But it's also maybe just a, a hair bit simpler than I want it to be. So I don't want to damn this with faint praise. Um, it's good. It's just not that good. Um, still terrific in the, in the sort of broad scheme of things. Yeah. I, w I was expecting this to, to come from behind, but it really hasn't. So 87 points. 87 points for the, uh, the Scotlander. Um, which is a fair score, just not what I was thinking I would give it. Uh, and kind of, you know, there you go. So, uh, last thought before I get, so I was, this morning I was reading something on the, um, from the Renegade Rum folks, um, you know, talk, talking about why what they are currently doing is so much, uh, better than, um, traditional methods in rum making. So, and uh, the thought was, well, you know, it, you, you might initially think that uh, uh, taking all your, your cane to this brand new stainless steel uh, shiny lab and uh, fermenting everything super quick with uh, yeast anyone could buy off the internet uh, would result in something that was, you know, a little bit safe, a little bit sterile, maybe. But you'd be wrong. You would be dead wrong because that is the way to protect the terroir on the other hand um the, what people in jamaica are doing when they make in, in the in the process of making high ester rum uh so the native yeast and and particularly the use of dunder like that obliterates terroir that is the enemy of terroir it and i quote homogenizes rum homogenizes rum uh, uh, so to, in, uh, in other words to make all rums the same and the only say so so in other words I, I, I think the message one is supposed to take away is that uh, Jamaicans should just fold it up and leave the rum and 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 uh, go on their silly way and leave the rum making to this guy from London who got his start in the wine business um, but of course that's that's nonsense. If you actually sit a bunch of high ester rums from different distilleries together, take this, sit it next to DOK, set it next to TECC, uh, try them all together, they are very different beasts. Or, or even not, not even the really high, like just do Rum Fire, just do um, the Worthy Park, the 502. Those are all really, really different rums. They are distinct. They are not at all homogenized. Um... And I don't, I don't know what kind of terroir you can talk about with, uh, 
you know, what, whatever the hell that, that is supposed to amount to there, but they are distinctive. They are, they are, they are each their own thing. Um, and it just happens to be the case that this one maybe didn't get the, the very best roll, uh, roll of the lot. I still like it though. So, uh, sorry, a little, a little bit of a babble there. Um, this Florida Rum Society pick gets an 89 points. Very, very good stuff. Um, if I lived in a place where they would ship to me, I would I would be looking into getting this. Um, the Scotlander Rum Lab Edition Jamaica High Ester White Rum gets a uh, very honest, very solid 87 points. Um, and yeah, that's the uh, that's the Clarendon Moni Musk video, I guess. Thanks for watching and cheers.